Hello Internet, this is Alex da Sudokus and it is the 29th of August 2020 and I am going to do another medium Sudoku today. Um, so we are going to use Snyder notations to try and solve this puzzle. I've already done a zero notation for version um, which I may link in the description below but otherwise let's get on with it. So Snyder notation basically means um, we are only going to pencil mark in two cells at a time within a cage for any one number. So I will show you what that means when I can do some pencil marking in. Um, with the, I'm basically scanning the board from one to nine to start with to see what interactions they have with the with the grid basically. So with the one I can see into this row and this column, but that doesn't give us any pencil markings just yet. So let's look at the twos. Well, these two twos forces a two in the middle column because the twos. This two sees these two cells, and that two sees these three cells. So this is what I mean by Snyder notations. Um, I'm pencil marking in the twos, and um, and I've got basically two possible candidates. So I will pencil mark them in. But for example, looking over here, um, that two leaves me with six possible candidates in this cage. This is an instance where I'm not going to pencil mark them in because um, it will only clutter the board right now and. Um, and I think by using Snyder notations, we can actually do a lot more deductions anyway. Um, so, for example, that two sees into the, these two cells, and that two sees into that cell. That allows me to pencil mark in two candidates. So this is an example of why Snyder notations are useful, because these two candidates line up on a row. So as I'm scanning the grid, when I see those twos, I assume that they, well, I can deduce that there can't be any twos in this cage on the bottom row. Um, and therefore there has to be a 2 in one of these three cells, but not these three cells. So by not pencil marking in all 6, I've already made some sort of deductions on where the 2 can possibly lie within this cage. Um, but again, we've got 3 candidates at the moment, so that's, again, too many for our likings. So we are going to ignore that and um, move on, basically. <coughs> so now looking at the, these 2s, they actually lock and a confirmed 2 in this cell, so we can actually put it in. So now this 2, notice it acts on the 3 that we had on before. So now we've deduced it down to just 2 possibilities, and this time we are going to pencil mark them in. Um, <coughs> so just a little tip in terms of um, shortcuts. Um, what I like to do, um, you can't see it on the screen, um, so maybe... Okay, I'm going to show it next time, but um, I'm going to kind of like explain it. What I do is um, I switch myself to candidates mode on New York Times by default. So normally when I put in the number, I get the pencil marking in the, in the cell, but if I have a confirmed digit, all you have to do is hold down the shift key and then hit the number and it'll put the confirmed number basically. So normal um, candidate number holding down shift I get a confirmed digit so and you can always hit the delete key to erase any pencil markings that you don't want anymore so with that in mind I've gone through all the twos um, I think and I can't do any more pencil markings so let's move on to threes so let's see uh, okay so this three acts on this column here and that three acts on that cell that actually leaves me with a pair of threes down there and now they act as a pointer pair of threes so working in tandem with that three that basically locks the top six cells in this cage off off limits and I've got three up there looking in this cell so oh hang on oh I'm being silly sorry I meant to use these two threes to look in that direction um, so sometimes I have a bit of a blindness with um, the greyed out cells. For some reason I just don't see them. And um, so I didn't recognise that as a free. I was focused on these two frees. So do be careful of that mistake. Um, <clears throat> if you... Um, I haven't done this, but one thing I can do is... Um, in fact, I'm going to try and edit this page. Um, you can actually change the CSS 
on um what do you call it um on websites using various extensions i'm using firefox and um i've got an extension called custom styles i think and what that means is um if i refresh now oh hang on i need to turn it on as well so refresh the page that allows me to erase um, or the grey cells basically so this may help me a little bit in terms of um, seeing the grit so now I can't tell what the starting numbers are but in my opinion it doesn't really matter the other thing you can do alternatively is um, which is probably detrimental to me is to make all the cells um, or the populated cells grey as well so that's something else you can do um, you may have also noticed my lines have gone a bit thicker because I use CSS to thicken them a little bit um, because when I play with my friend um, I have to downscale the video from basically 4k to 720p and um, those thin lines at one pixel width um, basically disappears on her screen so um, that's why I thicken them up using um, custom CSS um, anyway and um, where was I? I was looking at freeze. I'm really confused by this grid now, so I'm just going to turn it off and refresh again. So they're back to normal now. So I'll try and be more disciplined and um, try and identify the grey cells as well. So these two freeze act on uh, locks a free in this row, and I've got a free lock in that column, so these are freeze. Um, that free and that free interacts, but that doesn't. That leaves us free candidates, so we, we're going to ignore that. And um, so that's all the freeze. Oh no, these two freeze also act on the um, these two columns, allowing me, in conjunction with that free, to lock another pair of freeze in this cage. So let's continue on with fours. Um, fours, we've only got one four, so we're not able to do any pencil markings in. Um, looking around the grid, because it only interacts with these four cages so let's look at fives fives um, so this five sees these two cells so I have a pair of fives over there so now they act as a pointer pair meaning no fives can go in this row in the cages outside of this cage basically so in conjunction with that five and this five locking that cell we have the cells another pair of fives so Let's see, I think that's all the fives we can do, so what about sixes? Well, sixes, that six locks, those two cells, that six locks, that cell, so we have a confirmed six over here. Um, and also, these two sixes now act upon this cage, locking these cells, and I've got six locking this cell, so these are the six candidates. Um, let's look further, these two sixes locks a six in one of these two cells. I've got a six on that row, so that's another confirmed six. And looking over here, I've got a six locking this cell and these two sixes locking the top and bottom rows. So that gives us a three and six pair, matching pair of threes and sixes. They are typically quite powerful, but um, in this instance, they're not very useful. But suffice to say, um, if three goes in here, six has to go in there. Conversely, if three goes in here, six has to go in there. So that basically means the threes and sixes can't be in any of the remaining cells, but we already know that because of the pencil markings that we're able to produce. But it also means no other numbers can go in here. Otherwise, um, <coughs> otherwise the other digit can't go anywhere within this cage, basically. So something to bear in mind. Um, let's, let's continue on looking at the sixes. So sixes... Um, I think that's all the candidates we can do, so let's move on to sevens. So I can see these two sevens locks a seven in that cell, because that seven sees that column, that seven sees this column. And um, so before I place the seven, I just want to explain... Um, <coughs> sorry. My throat is just, yeah, a bit scratchy for some reason. Um, so when I place the seven as a confirmed number here i'm going to erase the pencil marking five so this is the power of snyder notations basically because we've only since we've only um, pencil marked in two candidates at a time within a cage if i erase any one of them 
the other has to be the remaining possible candidate in the in the entire cage basically so by raising a five I've actually placed a five basically so um, normally what I would do right now is um, scan around the board with the five and the sevens to see I mean I was already working on sevens anyway so naturally we, we will do that anyway but normally I'll also look at the fives so for instance seeing these two fives interact and place another pair of fives here but in light of this being um, kind of like a beginner's video I'm gonna ignore that and just be kind of a bit more rigid in my methodology and we are just going to continue pencil marking in the sevens and um, so these two sevens now interact and locks a pair of sevens here because of this seven looking to that cell so what else can we do with sevens well these two sevens interact with that seven locking a seven up here as well so now that creates another pair of sevens looking down here so in tandem with that seven it locks the sevens in there so these two sevens also interact locking out these five cells so that locks a seven up here which sees the pencil marking so that's a great thing about Snyder notations as well because we see pencil markings we erase them again that means the remaining cell has to be the correct number so we've just done all the sevens now let's move on to eights so eights um, again normally I will look at these two cells and actually pencil mark them in and see what interaction they have with the rest of the grid but for now we just keep it simple and we just move on to eights and see if eights can knock any give us any pencil markings we've only got one eight so we're not able to get anything but notice the four and eights both in these cages have the same effect where they look into single ca um, cages in the same directions but they can't actually give us any pencil markings so let's look at nines I've got two nines here so they lock a pair of nines in these two cells because of that nine locking the bottom cell but remember what we said about the matching pairs we've got three and sixes these two cells cannot contain any more numbers so therefore they're actually out of play so with that in mind these two nines and that nine actually locks a nine in that cell so again this is the power of Snyder notation it's very easy to use matching pairs to rule out any other possibilities and um, restrict your board a lot more so immediately looking at this nine working with that nine it locks a pair of nines here but looking up we can actually see another nine so that has to be a nine now so now this nine also works in tandem with that nine locking a pair of nines there so we're going to pencil mark them in in this instance but i can tell you that nine actually sits in this cell and i'll explain why in a second so pair of nines there so normally what i do is um, when i was scanning i would scan across with the two cells and if i look up i saw a nine so i know the nine has to go in here well as you get better what you'll find is um i look at these two columns nine is locked in these cells i'll look across now so even though this nine doesn't interact with the two cells i can see this nine interacts with that cell that actually creates a pointer pair of nines immediately immediately so um it's invisible but it still kind of um has some um, has a property of interaction so it actually knocks out that nine in the first place so this is why the nine has to go there basically because when you have a pointer pair of nines it means um the nine can't go anywhere else in this row um besides within this cage basically so on the cages outside of this the nine cannot exist in that row anymore so anyone who's even faster at them um, scanning would have noticed i also have a nine down here seeing into that cell anyway so i would have already placed a nine in that cell i wasn't quite quite as fast as that and um, depending on which way you scan the board for instance if i started from the top i would have seen these two nines locking a nine here and a nine sees that nine so that cell even so that would have locked a nine there and then using these two cells and that nine i would have locked the nine there so depending on what direction you go you'll have different um, results um, but it doesn't matter as long as you're kind of like systematic you'll always end up in the same um, situation basically so when you make changes to the board when you place a nine always look around and see and um, you need to continue on with um, scanning the same number so in this case 
you will continue scanning the night, even if you've already looked at the cage before. It may change based on the pencil marking or the actual number that you've placed, basically. So with this 9, before I placed it, there was a 6 in there, so when I place it, it erases the 6 pencil marking, meaning I have another 6 in this cage resolved. So we have actually put in all the 9s possible on this, um, on this board, so we can now do two different things. One is we can, we can scan around the board from 1 to 9 again and see what more we can do. And I can guarantee you there'll be more pencil markings, there'll be more confirmed numbers. But to improve, we need to look at um, kind of more logical things as well, like shortcuts that we can find. So shortcuts um, are basically um, new logics that you've developed around the board. And they're not really shortcuts, but basically new possibilities on a board based on the changes that has happened. So for example, when we put in the fives and sevens earlier, we can actually tell that with these two cells left, there are only two possible values. And remember, we only pencil in two candidates at a time with Snyder, nota Snyder notation. That means we can actually pencil mark in the ones and the threes in these cells anyway. It doesn't actually break the convention of um, Snyder notations. And by pencil marking, by pencil marking in the freeze, we've created a pointer pair freeze. It means in no other cages horizontally can the free exist on this row anymore. So that actually knocks out that pencil marking of free, confirming that the free is in fact in that cell. So that's an example of what you can do. Um, other things that we can see, well, we can see another pair in this cage, and they have they have to be fours and eights. And um, anything else we've got? Let's see. Um, so in terms of weak areas, I tend to attack anything that has um, two or three cells remaining on any dimensions, basically. So either the row, the column, or the cage, basically. So I've tackled the twos. So now I'm going to tackle the threes. So we have three, three cells left on this row, so there can only be three possible numbers, and they are 1, 4, and 8. Well, unfortunately, we can't place any of them because um, we can't see 1, 4, or 8 in any of these columns at all, so we can move on. Now, I don't know if you noticed, but we actually have another triple in here. Um, well, that may be a bit strange at first, because we actually have two more cells over here. But, if you think about it, these two cells have to be 1 and 3, and no other numbers can go in these two cells. So in ess essence, they are out, out of play. So they're locked in. I know these have to be the 1s and 3s. So ignoring the 1s and 3s, I know there has to be 3 digits left in these 3 cells, besides 1 and 3. So if you can't count up, we've got 1, we're missing a 2, so 2s have to go in one of these 3 cells. 3 we've already got, 4, so 2 and 4, um, and if we continue counting up, we'll find that we need um, 2, 4 and 6 in these 3 cells, and that's, a, that's really useful because um, we can see a 6 in this cell in two different ways. We can also see a 2, we've got a pointer pair of 2s here, or within the same cage, we've already identified where the 2s can go, so this cell cannot be a 2 or a 6, so the only other candidate it can be is a 4. And the other thing you can could have done as well is this cell sees a 6. This cell also sees a 6 down here. So that means the 6 has to go over there. So that's another way of... Um, you can either look for the, the single digit and see where... Um, see if it overlaps more than one cell. Or you can look at a cell to see if it ov overlaps if it sees two different digits, basically. So we can actually resolve the two, four, and six in that triple area. And um, and that's unlocked a lot of possibility for us now. For example, the four now interacts with the pencil marking four here, meaning there has to be the eight, and there has to be the four. So now that's, that's created an eight, and that eight interacts with the other eight over here, locking those four cells, meaning that has to be an eight. And now these two 8s interact with each other as well, locking 
a pair of eights down there. So that's just one of the many things we can do right now. Uh, what about a six? Well, that's six. See, it's the pencil marking six here. So rather than erasing the pencil marking six, since I already have a pair of matching pairs down here, I can already tell that when I erase the six, it forces a six over here and a three over here. So whenever you have a matching pair, you might as well think, okay, I see one of the digits, it must be the other. And that's the three and the six is placed. And now the three interacts back with that three, locking a three up here as well. So now these two threes interact and locks a pair of threes over there. So there are lots of interactions going on then by just attacking the weaker areas of the board, we've unlocked lots of possibilities. Um, we can carry on with the possibilities. We've got these twos locking a two down here, and that two erases the pencil marking two over there, creating a two. And now they interact back with each other, creating another two over here, and that erases the pencil marking two up there. So that's all the twos we've placed on the board just by attacking these tiny areas and chances are there's still more things that we can do so let's have a look let's see um this six does it bring anything else no it doesn't and in fact all the sixes are done so we can ignore that what about the two twos are all done as well so uh, what about this four can that four do anything else for us well this four interacts with that four locking a pair of fours up there and does it do anything else? Well, it also interacts with that four, locking a pair of fours down here. This four interacts over here in this cage, locking these two cells, meaning there has to be a pointer pair of fours, because they're lined up in that column, meaning no other fours can go in that column outside of this cage. So we just place ourselves another four. Um, as we continue on, these two fours interact, locking a pair of fours over here. But I think that is the end of our interactions with the fours. So we've done a lot by just um, looking at this weak area. And we could have attacked other weak areas as well. We've got another weak area over here. We've got one, three, and eight over here. Um, unfortunately, oh yes. So these three cells have to be run one, three, or eight. I mean, I don't think we had the eight there before, so that's new information, but um, nonetheless, by continuing on to attack the weak areas, you should be able to find yourself solving the puzzle. So one and eight already exist, and I was looking for one, three, and eight. So three has to go there now because I see the one and the eight. So that three unlocks the one, three pair there. Also, we should erase that pencil marking. So now all the threes are done. Um, these two ones also interact, locking that cell. So one's over here, and now this one interacts with the pointer pair of ones, locking a pair of ones down there. More importantly, on this column, we are left with only one cell, and the only possible candidate is the eight. So the eight, does it play nice with anything else? Well, it comes over here, locking these two cells, meaning I've got a pair of pointed eights down here. That knocks out the pencil marking eight, and gives us yet another eight. And now that eight sees into that cell, meaning in this cage, there's only one possible place the eight can go. And the other candidate was a one. Um, I could have pencil marked him in early on, but I just kind of like follow the chain reaction around the board and um, and I'm basically placing the numbers as I go along. Um, on this row, we've only got one cell left and it has to be the eight. Um, we're left with two numbers here, one and five. Well, we've got a one down here, so one has to go here and a five has to go there. And that five comes down here, locking these two cells, meaning the five has to go in here. We also have five there, so that is now a five. Um, five further interacts down here. It locks that cell and that cell. So we've got a pointer pair of fives, meaning the five cannot go in here. We also have a five looking to this cell, so five is resolvable, which also means in this column, we've got a four. In that row, we've got the four left. So that erases that four as well. So this four now looks down, pinning a four in this row, and that four sees a pencil marking, erasing, um, forcing a four in that location. And finally, looking at these two fours interacting over here, along with the four in this column, forces a four in there, and we just erase the pencil marking five, so five has to go here, we just erased an eight, so eight has to go there. 
that leaves me with one candidate in this cage, one candidate in this cage and column, and one candidate in this row. So this one also erases that pencil marking one, meaning one goes there. This one earlier also knocks out another pencil marking, and that gives us another one. So we're now just left with two cages with one digit left. Ooh, five goes there, and eight goes there. Um, oh, actually, there's another one here. That's also a five. And that is how we solve today's medium New York Times Sudoku. Pretty straightforward, I think. Um, I hope that's useful. Um, I don't know if I'm going too slowly for a lot of people, but um, I think I'd rather go slow and um, allow beginners to kind of um, find use for my videos. But um, if you're finding me going a bit too slow, um, maybe it's worth looking at my other medium solve with um, no candidates or looking at my hard puzzles um, because um, yeah we get into more advanced techniques in the hard area and basically I use the same routines between medium and hard um, so yeah feel free to move on to hard where I would assume more knowledge and um, see how we get on and um, so that's today's Sudoku hope you enjoyed it if you find it helpful please like and subscribe and um, I shall see you guys tomorrow Bye.